Hello everyone, and welcome to day 254 of Project 365. For some reason, my computer completely fucked me over yesterday, uh, and it didn't continue to put up my video yesterday. Um, I actually did a video, and it's uploading right now. Uh, and it kind of sucks, because it said that it had uploaded the video, and I guess I didn't bother checking like I should have, but for some reason, the video didn't go through, uh, even though I did one, and so that kinda pisses me off. Uh, but I did do a video yesterday, and so I know I did it, and so I didn't fail, it's just kinda stupid because you guys didn't see it. That being said, I guess I'll go ahead and do what I had planned for today, which is my monologue. Yes, goddammit, the Parthenon. <laughs> Look at its famous flutings and famous columns. What are they there for? Your Greeks took marble and they made copies of their wooden structures with it because that's what others had done before. And now, here we are taking copies in concrete and steel of copies in plaster of copies in marble of copies in wood. Why? Rules. Well, here are my rules. What can be done with one substance must never be done with another. No two materials are alike. No two sites on Earth are alike. No two buildings share the same purpose. The site, the material, the purpose, those determine the shape. Nothing can be reasonable or beautiful without its own central idea, and that idea sets every detail. A building is alive like a man. Its integrity comes from its own truth, its own central theme, its own singular purpose. A man doesn't borrow hunks of his body, and a building doesn't borrow hunks of its soul. Its maker gives it its soul, along with every wall and window and staircase to express it. Why is it so important what others have done? Why does something become sacred? from the mere fact of not being our own? Why is anyone and everyone right so long as it isn't ourself? Why is truth stretched to fit everything else? There must be some reason I don't know. I've never known it. I'd like to understand. Hooray for flip cams dying. Anyway, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. It still has a lot of work to do, and I, I need to get it ready for tomorrow, so I'm just going to keep going at it. But uh, that's what I have so far. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, this is actually a monologue that I clipped together from the book The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand. Uh, it's at the, closer to the beginning of the book. I thought it was a really good idea, and uh, since then I've seen like ceaseless, never-ending other possibilities for different monologues, but I sort of stuck myself to this one because of my damn indecisiveness. I decided to go ahead and be like, no, I'm sticking to this decision and that's it. So question for you guys. Um, hmm, what is your favorite scent? Uh, mine would be... Hmm, what would be my favorite? Like, favorite scent in general. Um, I think my favorite scent would be any type of baked good, like baked cookies are, are probably my favorite. Like if I could, if I could have my house constantly smelling like baked cookies, not burnt cookie, just baked cookies, I would be very content. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. Bye.